I'm going to run through this. Uh, a lot of the stuff that was gone over, you got any questions asked. Um, this is more of just the Australia side of the business right here. Uh, it was a common based engine designed uh, around all of the technologies, looking forward, like Dale mentioned, looking forward at the market about what we knew that we had to get accomplished. This engine was designed from there. Uh, all of the engines currently today uh, are built here, 13, 15, 16. Uh, Germany, uh, we are the only ones that build 15s. Germany builds 16s and 13s, and Fuso will only build 13s. We do all the connecting rods. Work my poor buddy to death out there. I got a friend of mine works out the rod mine. Kill him, you're killing him. <laughs> all right. Um, the launch of the DD-15, as we said earlier, was in 2007, and at that time we had 70,000 running. Uh, right now we're at 110,000. 170,000, I put the one in front of that now, I guess. So, um, as a global engine platform, uh, we have a lot of common components. How much, what's the percent, 60? 72 percent of the parts are interchangeable from engines. So, you got one that's dead over here, and you got another one breaks apart, you can probably take a part off that one and put it on that one. So it's a good thing. Uh, we've invested $1.5 billion over four and a half years. Uh, DD engines have enough test miles to circle a rough world 225 times. Uh, the engine was designed with 2010 in mind. And the thing that we're kind of proud of right now is that, I'm surprised Dale didn't mention it, that we were the first engine manufacturer to meet the global uh, greenhouse gas 2014 emission. But he did mention the fact that we were pushing it forward to air credits. He didn't tell you the part about we're the first to do it. And that's a, that's a big uh, big thing for us that we were able to get there. Uh, this just gives a little bit of the idea here with uh, the combined efficiencies of the engine and truck, which we talked about. Uh, future emissions in mind, the global greenhouse gas. Uh, get the right engine for the right job. I mean, that's using specifications for the engine, transmission, <coughs> make sure that everything matches up right. And then we build all the engines, the UAW, who Pam is a proud member of. Here's some of the technologies that we have. We have the asymmetrical turbo. Uh, we'll show you out the plant. It's a pretty good design um, where we are able to take the exhaust and put the exhaust through this uh, compound turbo. And we actually use the energy of the exhaust to put into the gear train. So why isn't it on the day you said that? Um, compound turbos or uh, uh, asymmetrical turbos, they don't work below about 450 horsepower. They're, they're, they, the benefit uh, is offset by the amount of weight. It's just not there. Yeah, so you don't get the you don't get the advantage back on it. So that's why in Australia, running 560 horsepower, you are taking full advantage of the of the compound turbo charger. Is that a technology you bought from Pulsar? No, no, that's proprietary to Detroit Diesel. Um, the what makes it work is the torque converter inside. A lot of people have tried this before but couldn't get it to work. And it's because of the torque converter that's inside the gearbox here. Um, there's a torque converter right in here. And that torque converter is out of a spark car. So that's what makes the whole system work. I mean, everyone tries it, but they didn't have that torque converter. And that's why, I mean, we've had virtually zero failures as far as this goes. I mean, this is one of the more reliable components that we use. Um, we have a fuel filter module. Let's go show you out the plan. All of our modular design, the integrated jake brakes. Um, this is the quietest jake brake on the market in the in the H step engines. Um, during our initial testing, whenever we would turn over a new RG truck to one of the drivers, the first complaint they would come back would be the brakes aren't working. I did a lot of work with Walmart initially when we released this engine. And I would be testing, and I had to actually go and put the computer screen in front of these guys so they could watch the brakes come on and go off. Because, was, because oh, the brakes aren't working. Well, why do you think that? Well, I don't hear them. And it's because they don't make any noise. Extremely quiet brake. 
and then of course DDAC. This is a uh, DDAC, uh, we went from a one box with DDAC 4, DDAC 5. DDAC 6 went to a two box system where you have a motor computer and a chassis computer. And then DDAC 10 has a motor computer, a chassis computer, and a complete computer that runs just the after treatment. That's how complex our after treatment device is now. That we need, it needs its own ECM to run it. Here's your proprietary turbocharger and what it works by throttling the EGR valve, that also helps by throttling the EGR valve up and down, regulates the amount of gas, slide the slider in here. So, um, we'll, get, we'll show you that tore down, we got some pictures of that more up there on the back. Here's our amplified common rail fuel system that is part of our, our uh, this is your primary, uh, primary and secondary fuel pumps here. This is your module over here. Uh, Pam's got one out there she can show you firsthand and give you a good idea of how all that works.